Hi Pete, I've been accepted onto my non-medical prescribing course. How can I prepare for it? That is an excellent question, Mariam. Thank you for asking. The non-medical prescribing course can seem like a lot, particularly at the start of your course. Potential employers see each NMP qualification as much the same regardless of where you get it from. But each programme is unique in how they deliver the teaching and how they want you to fit your learning into your clinical area. There's a few things that I wish I'd known before I started my course. So this video should help you to avoid some of the mistakes I made. Let's take a look. Every NMP course will provide you with a course handbook quite early in the programme. This document can be quite long with some centres using 30 pages or more to outline the course, but I can't emphasise enough how important this document is. This document covers not only your responsibilities as a student, but also your designated prescribing practitioner's responsibilities and the content required for your portfolio and any other reflective logs or assignments to complete. Your time is precious, but spending more time early in your course understanding this handbook is a brilliant investment. This will help you to get the best out of the learning opportunities as they present and it will also help you avoid mistakes which could create extra work for you further on. It might sound excessive, but to get the best out of the course handbook, I would recommend reading it in full twice. During the second reading, it's worth making notes about any queries you may have for your course organiser. It's much easier to approach these queries early in the course, and if you can get a clear idea of what's expected of you, it'll reduce the amount of time you'll spend completing each task. Remember, you're not alone facing this course. Your fellow students are in exactly the same position as you, so make sure you take the time to get to know them. You probably won't make friends for life on your NMP course, but something as simple as setting up a WhatsApp group can make it much easier to resolve issues as the course progresses. Perhaps the biggest logistical challenge for the course is working out how your 90 hours of supervised practice with your DPP will fit into your schedules. There's a common misconception that this 90 hours is shadowing time, but supervised practice is very different. Only a small portion of this time will be spent watching other healthcare professionals undertaking their daily duties. The majority of this time is actually spent actively involved in patient care with support and guidance being offered by either your DPP or another approved healthcare professional. Each clinical setting will offer different opportunities for delivering this, so each course offers some flexibility in how much time is spent physically present with the DPP, so pay close attention to this in this section of the handbook. With this information in hand, you're now ready to get to know your DPP and how they can help steer you through your course. Your DPP will usually be a senior clinician at your organisation, and as a result, they'll probably be very busy. They'll be given a copy of the handbook when they sign on to this role, and they should have taken the time to read it, but if you can familiarise yourself with their responsibilities as a DPP, it'll really help them support you better. Your early meetings with them will help you get a plan for the area you would like to focus on, along with any activities that you could undertake in their organisation, which would both drive forward your learning and benefit the patients and staff there. If you can get these goals to line up, you'll breeze through the 90 hours. For my practice, we set up supported medication review clinics where each patient I reviewed was discussed with the GP as a case-based discussion. This provided lots of great learning opportunities, along with providing medication reviews for the patients at the practice. So have a think about how your activities could benefit your area. By this stage, you'll have a feel for what you need to do, but how will you fit this around all the other things in your work and home life? You'll have multiple competing commitments, so it's important you get a feel for your schedule and understand the times when you can do NMP work and the times when you can't. I would recommend roughly mapping things out in your calendar to lay out how you'll meet your goals. 
You might include specific times for studying or completing assignments, but most importantly, it has to include times when you're not going to do anything NMP related. These breaks are vital to help avoid you overloading yourself or becoming burnt out. If you do find yourself in a position where you're struggling with aspects of your course, it's important you let your course supervisor know as soon as possible, as there may be measures they can put in place to help you. Alongside this, there are some great tools available to us which can help with managing stress and mindfulness when we're under extra pressure. My personal favourite is an app called Balance. This isn't a sponsored post, I genuinely use this myself, so it's very easy to recommend. Balance uses short five-minute sessions to steer you through techniques for meditation and mindfulness, along with some techniques that would really come under cognitive behavioural therapy, or CBT. The sessions are very accessible, but the depth in what they cover is impressive, and I do feel this is useful regardless of the challenges you're facing. Remember that whilst the course can be tough, when you start the prescribing course, you've actually already made it through some very tough assignments at undergraduate or postgraduate level. These were challenging at the time, but with the right approach, they were manageable. There's also no shame in needing to resubmit or reset components of it. I had to redo some of my assignments because I hadn't read the course handbook properly. So hopefully, after watching this, you won't make the same mistake I did. See you next time.